educational summer set bills. I love playing the big rooms. <laughs> Please be advised that this and all meetings of the board are open to the public immediate consistent with the Open Public Meetings Act and that advance notice required therein has been provided. This is a meeting of the Board of Education of Somerset Hills at which formal action may be taken. The public will have an opportunity to be heard as shown on the agenda. Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. but we have a great partnership with our local VFW, and for the past few years, we've been growing in participation in this. In fact, we've had such great collaboration with the VFW that they've increased the amount of awards that they've given to our students. Um, so we have sixth grade up through 11th grade winners this year who are going to be able to be recognized. Um, but the really the amazing uh, growth that we've seen is and the great work that's come from the kids has been because of our collaboration with the VFW and the hard work of the teachers that have really helped all of the students in those classes. So I know Ms. McMillan is likely here to talk about BMS, but Ms. Serzo is right up front, so I'm going to turn it over to talk about the Voice of Democracy for us. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Catelli. Good evening, board members and members of the community. It's an honor to be here and to share with you very briefly uh, a little bit more about the Voice of Democracy program. Since 1947, the Voice of Democracy has been the Veterans of Foreign Wars' premier scholarship program. And each year, nearly 40,000 high school students compete for more than $2 million in scholarships and incentives. Students compete by writing and recording an audio essay on an annual patriotic theme. This year's theme was, Why My Vote Matters. This is the fourth consecutive year that I have used this contest as a speech assignment in my public speaking electives course. I believe it's an ideal way for our students to appreciate the value of public speaking 
as a vital means of civic engagement and experience the power of rhetoric and the importance of effective oral communication skills. I will tell you, compared to previous years, this year's theme was particularly challenging. Many of the students struggled to personally connect with the theme. They had a hard time answering the question, why does my vote matter in our democracy? Perhaps because the age of the students ranging from <coughs> freshmen through seniors, uh, I don't think I had any students that were even registered with the age to vote. So that certainly was was part of that challenge. But in the end, I have to report that all of the students wrote and read their essays to their peer audience, and six of the students submitted their essays in the national contest, three of which came out winners. A couple of weeks ago, as Mr. Catelli indicated, our VFW host came to our classroom and personally awarded the winners with monetary prizes and the Outstanding Spokesperson for Freedom Award. It is my pleasure to introduce to you those three winners. First, Mr. Max Call, our 10th grade recipient. Award from the VFW, the Veterans of Warfare, was honestly an honor. Um, as a, only a 16-year-old, it was kind of hard to connect with the, the theme of the speech because I am not allowed to vote yet. But as an American like citizen and knowing how our government works, I found it somewhat easier to relate to the older kids who can vote for our president and our government. Winner, Caroline McDowell, our junior. This was an amazing opportunity in order to do this, and I've never really entered my writing in anywhere, so it'd be super cool to one, do that, and actually get something out of it. I just want to say thank you to Ms. Serza for helping me write it and construct it, and it was a super awesome opportunity. <laughs> And finally, a uh, freshman, she went, Bridget Lynn went to the district, she was our district level winner, excuse me. She was invited to Cherryville uh, last Saturday in the snow. She and her uh, lovely sister and her parents enjoyed an evening in, uh, and dinner. She got to meet other young men and women across the state and present her incredible essay, and I'm so proud to say that she was uh, competing at the national level, state and national level, and, and it's an honor to introduce Bridget Lynn. opportunity to support these young uh, these young minds, these young children. Uh, they fill my day. They represented not only Bernard's High School's finest uh, district, certainly, and um, our great country. Thank you for the support, and um, it's really, it's something that we plan to continue. Thank you. school winners. Also, this is the second year in a row that we have had the district winner from our school, um, showing the strength of the program and the commitment. 
Um, but I want to turn everything over to Ms. McMillan to talk about our Patriots Pen winners at the middle school. I eliminated myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, the Patriot is an annual essay contest for middle school students in grades six through eight. So our fifth graders they have to wait until sixth grade. Under the auspices of Ms. Fitelli and Ms. Fisher, social studies and literacy teachers collaborate to encourage as many submissions as possible. Toward the end of October, Ms. Tressler, Mr. Porter, other colleagues and I begin our essay collection in earnest. Has the submission rule been followed? Do they have within 300 and 400 words, etc.? So not only does our local DFW 7858 assist with inspiring student writers to submit to essay contests, but the brochure itself is an excellent lesson in following directions, <laughs> like doing your taxes, etc. And informational reading. This year's topic, Why Do I Honor the American Flag, provided the most varied responses I've encountered in the past four years my students have participated. Students referenced football players who have forsaken their careers to serve in the military. I knew about Pat Tillman. I was reminded of my love, Roger Staubach, that he had served for 40 to 11 years, those who liked the Super Bowl, etc. Um, family members whose first glimpse of America is intertwined with the flag in public service. As is often the case, I marvel at how much I learned from our students' responses. Although having a student win a $50 check, and I will introduce the three students from the middle school in the home today, not a $50 dollar check, a framed award, and in the past two years, a backpack award. Um, red, black, wonderful colors. The DFW 7858 gives the most precious gift they can by visiting our winners in their classes and sharing their stories. No price tag can represent the value of an in-person primary source. And this year, we have six members visit Burnsville Middle School and honorary seven because they spoke about his story being drafted while at Fordham Law School, which you know I thought if you were in law school you would be drafted. What did I know? And how fortunate, how fortunate, and when I, when I call you, I hope you come up, how fortunate the classmates of Ella Dombrotowski, grade six, Brendan Lobo, grade seven, and Caitlin Sabato, grade eight, were on Thursday, January 10th, 2019 when these six DFW members arrived. Why do I honor the American flag? The American flag is more than just a piece of flag. The flag represents everything that we believe in, democracy, freedom, bravery, and grit. I have to tell you, when I read Brandon Lobo, ending with grit, it was hard for me not to say, oh my goodness, yes, now the one. And he did indeed. So, uh, Mr. Lobo, Ms. Sebastian, and I'm just going to have to keep you forward. But I will share something about each one. So we'll start with grade six. Ella is walking down the hall. She is across from Miss Russell's room. And Miss Wells and Miss McMillan are standing at the door. And I said, What do you think? And she looks at me like, I, I thought I didn't have to deal with her at all. So I'm great. <laughs> and uh, wow. So she knows spending that time with Miss Wells. <coughs> Got to be in it to win it, and I have the pleasure of your sister, and I don't know, your parents are amazing, so. <laughs> I've never really entered my writing in anything before, and to win was like really amazing, and I think that the experience was one of the best that I've ever had. Right. And I knew that as soon as I read his essay. And Brandon had to leave 
rest and practice early. He's all showered at me. <laughs> So very talented and she's a great writer. But the ultimate is she shook everyone's hand. She had such voice. I mean, SHSP does such an amazing job. So I just have to when Mr. Catelli asked and Ms. Gruffalo, my principal, I thought there are two things that I learned, really important lessons. In Brendan's class, there was a student who mentioned that his uncle, great uncle, was the second one to uh, be invited to the Hanoi Hilton. And his father continues the service as a board member. Similarly, one of the veterans who came, his granddaughter was pulled in by Ms. Crockle. I don't know how she knows this. I thought I had a trademark on knowing everything about students that I could possibly learn, but she found on me, so she grabbed the student and once again. So public service, you know, meeting late into the night, all of this. I thank you for coming here. It's very long table. I thought we were going to be in the other room. And I thank you all for clapping, and I hope we have many more winners in district levels. I hope they go on to just win lots of $50 and then Thank you. Thank you to all of the teachers and to Michael Catelli. Thank you to our winners. We're so proud of you. I uh, why? Makes me a little teary seeing you all out there. Um, Mr. Tover and Mr. Amatoski, are you ready to give us the update on BMS? All right, here you go. So the City Council attended a convention at the Colony of New Jersey in Ewing, New Jersey, uh, two weeks ago. It was really fun. We both we all walked out with amazing experiences and different skills to learn for the Student Council. For example, I took two classes, one on how to run a school basketball game, and another about how to interact with little kids and do activities with them. It was really fun, we walked away with many new ideas, and we learned a lot. A special thanks to Ms. O'Halloran for taking us on the trip, and Ms. Garofalo for recommending the game. Thank you. to attend the TCNJ Student Council Convention. We all had an excellent time learning new skills and gathering new ideas to run a better and more efficient student council here at the MS. On behalf of myself and the Student Council, I would like to say thank you to all the amazing teachers and staff that made this inspirational trip possible. We look forward to participating next year and helping our community. Basically about uh, school happenings. 
So normally I don't speak in front of this amount of people, but I can handle it. <laughs> um, so I'd like to start off by congratulating all the award winners that uh, won awards tonight. It's pretty awesome to have all those things on your resume before you even come to high school. <laughs> um, District-wide talent show is happening on Wednesday, February 6th in the pack from 7 to 9. Um, there's submissions from all schools, the elementary school, the middle school, and the high school. Um, and the VHS Student Council is going to be staffing and running um, so that everything runs smoothly. And there's some very, very cute acts and stories all the audition days. <laughs> um, the January issue of the VHS newspaper, The Crimson, will cover how students feel about social media and the negative effects of growing up in such a strong social media influenced world, which is going to be a pretty fresh perspective on that. So stay tuned for that. Um, the ND program is teaming up with the VHS Student Council in the school store and basically will be um, selling merchandise to the entire uh, VHS student body. Um, it's going to start sometime during a study hall in February. Um, the store is located at the beginning of the annex where anyone wants to buy merchandise. Um, it'll really help bridge the gap between the MD students and the student body, and it's going to be a lot of fun to interact and deal with the school store. Um, hopefully, some vending machines will be put into the uh, media center pretty soon. Um, Brian Gonzalez, the, uh, the school president, is working on that. So, um, a lot of students found out, a lot of seniors found out where they're going to college, but there's also a chunk of students who are still waiting back for some decisions. And normally January and the cold temperatures kind of lead to some uh, lack of motivation, let's say, from seniors. Um, but the upcoming private graduation events will definitely help boost morale. There's United Stars, which is happening on Friday. Basically, everyone dresses up as famous historical figures, movie stars, and anyone else. And everyone's very excited about that. And uh, last the senior fashion show is happening in two weeks where everyone gets dressed up with their friends and they pretend to be movie stars. So thank you for your time. <laughs> like the moment at the uh, Academy Awards where they're like, and here's the, you know, guy who comes with the briefcase. I don't, it's, you've got a tough act to follow, but give us what you've got. <laughs> okay. okay, good evening. Uh, it is a tough act to follow. The presentation is very good. Uh, I'm here to present the audience, which is very exciting. Um, <laughs> what the district is required to do is we quite have an audit every year. It's not just a financial audit, it's also a compliance audit. So you should have two um, reports in front of you today. One's the audit and management report, and one's the, uh, the audit and financial statements. Um, the report is late this year. I did file a letter with the uh, business administrator last week. There was a new, uh, I guess, an accounting rule that the, uh, the board had a file was called Gadget 75. And it's really up to report the uh, liability of the medical benefits that the uh, district employees really receive. However, those numbers don't come from the district. They actually come from the Department of uh, Education and from the Division of Pension. Now, they got way, way behind. Uh, this is just like the pension was a few years ago. They hired others to do their work it took them longer, a lot longer than they thought it was going to be, and the numbers are still not out yet. I mean, I think they're, they're, they're trying to get them out by the end of the week, and then once those numbers are out, the official report will be filed in 30 days. The report you had is draft. It's going to be 99.9%. It's not going to change. There'll be a few schedules in the back that may change, uh, but not too much of something that's not material. So whatever you have in front of you is really going to be pretty good. So this report has not been filed with the state, and it has filed in the county support. Um, the small report, this one is about you know, 30 pages long, but the, uh, this report has about most of the auditing. It has a lot about compliance auditing in here. Uh, the Department of Education gives us about a 200 page audit manual to follow. Uh, it talks about payroll, financial administration, uh, activity funds, uh, fixed assets, uh, cafeteria operations. And this is where you would have your recommendations. And we do have one formal recommendation in here in fact. Um, it's, it's not very material, but I, I can see what happened. There was some changeover from personnel with the uh, Treasurer's School monies. And we're just saying that the district maintain adequate surety bond coverage for the Treasurer's School monies. It's a requirement to state law. Uh, you change from, I guess, November 17, to change it to 18. Somebody changes to get bond. Something very easy to correct. Okay. 
Uh, the big report is actually the uh, financial statements. Uh, the schedules in this report are quite extensive. Uh, the number of figures come they come from the it's compiled from the uh, financial statements and the administrative goals. Okay. Uh, a lot of schedules in here, there's a lot of redundancy in here, there's a lot of duplication, but the report that I the schedules that I like to point out to I always say every year it's the uh, the C schedules. Um, the budgetary comparison is an actual profit and loss statement that gives you the detailed budget operations. It gives you the budget that you adopt, the transfer, the actually the expenses are, the revenue you earn. It also acts as a profit and loss. And it gives you the surplus at the end of the year. Uh, so you did very well this year. You started with yeah, 5.4 million surplus. And you generated $735,000 back. So you ended the year with $6,180,000 surplus. However, that's made up of different components. Uh, you have a thing called excess surplus, that's an excess of 32% of your operating, it's a million, million 523. Uh, you have maintenance reserve of 201,000. You have a capital reserve of 1,173 for capital projects, anything you want to do, capital nature. Uh, you have encumbrances of 96,000, just on, you know, orders that they did at uh, June 30th, 2018. They were actually paid in the next couple of months. You got used in a budget, the budget you're ever in now, you have 630,000. And then you're unassigned, Three forty. That's a two percent that you can keep above and beyond everything else that you have actually free can't do. Uh, this time, there any questions about the report? You asked me seventy-five. Why did the latest thing in place? Uh, anything that you do in the manual report? Let me answer your question at this point. Sure. Now on the bond, um, on our long-term liabilities, note number four. Uh, I noticed that you talk about the four set of bonds and the interest there. The only thing I've noticed, this is a draft report, the bonds that we bought um, the last time, there's no interest rate there. At the end, we have the three separate bonds have interest rate, and it may be a good idea to get the interest rate of 2.09 2 in there. I don't have, I don't have page numbers on. Yeah, well, it's still a draft form. That's fine. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't number the page. Yeah. So, I mean, that was the only, I mean, it doesn't Okay, yeah, I, I see. Yeah, I can put that in. That's still it cool. doesn't change. It doesn't change. It's just that it's, if you're reading about the bonds, you want to Gotcha. Them. And I think, I think later on you have, where you actually spell out the bonds and the payments. I think it's in there. Right. But, you know, that's, that would be my only comment. If not, I'd just like to say thank you to the superintendent and his administrator for the courtesies and the uh, hospitality gave us when we were doing the work. We extend their pleasure uh, to us because we do ask for a lot of information and data from the records and we follow them a lot. So they do the straight face on this. You know, they, 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 they cooperate with what we're asking for. I don't want to thank the board for the business. Please state your name and address. Comments are limited to three minutes, but an individual may speak a second time after all others who wish to speak on the topic have been heard. Please understand that our public forums are not structured as question and answer sessions, but are offered as opportunities to share your thoughts with the board. In instances where the board feels there is a misunderstanding or inaccuracy, the board president and our superintendent may address the comment. In accordance with New Jersey statute, the board will not discuss matters regarding specific personnel. Public questions and comments will be limited to 30 minutes for your input. Are there any public questions or comments on agenda items tonight? My name is Mary Pan. I have uh, three students in the district, and I'm a school psychologist at Benwell. And I'm just here to ask a question specifically about item number 14 um, on the agenda tonight. I noticed that the job description of school psychologist is being updated at the meeting tonight, and I'm just wondering if you can share with me what that update is in the report. Yeah, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Is that better? All right. Sorry. I'm going to speak to item number 14, which is the updated description of school psychologists, and I'm just wondering if you could share with me how that will differ going forward. Um, Mary, the only thing that is changing in the job description would be um, other possible reporting chains. So right now the job description indicates that it would only report to um, the principal or uh, Teresa in her current capacity. And the change would be that a uh, person could report to Teresa and the principal or the, the director of guidance. Thank you. Sure thing. Thank you. And I'm also short. Um, my name is Lynn Weltler, and I'm the president of the Somerset Hills Education Association. And I did notice that you received correspondence from two families regarding the teacher contracts. And I know that we do have some members of the audience that just have additional comments that they'd like to share with the board. I'm here both as a parent and a teacher. I've been fortunate enough to teach in the school district since 1984. I graduated from Burnside, my mom graduated from Burnside, my grandmother, and so forth, one of my sons. The school is very near and dear to my heart. It's been around for a long time, and I consider it to be one of the best. The administrators, staff, parents, children are outstanding, and I've always felt so honored to be a part of this outstanding district. I beg the Board of Education to place a similar contract. As a parent of a student at the high school and an employee, I don't want this issue to get ugly, and I know it will soon. The employees deserve a fair contract with good medical benefits. I hope when you look and take a good look at this contract, you'll look at Chapter 78. Staff members are paying a large percentage of their insurance. Our district, our, excuse me, other districts in the counties have been getting the county average and paying and pay, and Chapter 78 relief has been capped. I pay a maximum amount allowed by the state based on my salary for medical insurance, meaning I pay $9,901.80 a year for medical benefits. I take home $8,446.80 less than I did four years ago. That's $844.68 a month. It hurts when you have children in college and your salary is going backwards. I ask the Board of Education to please take this into consideration and thank you so much for your time. Dedicated, selfless, conscientious, determined. These are just some of the words used to describe members of the Somerset Hills School District. From top top schools, hired because of their talents, toy drives, coat drives, giving to the veterans, feeding the hungry, countless community service projects facilitated by members of this district, awards given as we've seen tonight, visits to the White House, all facilitated by members of this district. Now is when all this is happening, and now is when this contract needs to be settled. Believe in us in the way we believe in you. Settle the contract now.
My name is Stephen Sands, and I've been a music teacher in the Somerset Hills School District for 21 years. My family and I love this community and have made it our permanent home. I'm standing here today a product of the support this community has shown for its teachers, and especially to the arts. The constituents, Board of Education, and administration support some amazing arts programs that benefit our students year after year. This is my first time speaking to the Board of Ed, but I feel that we are at a critical juncture in the support of our teachers. One of the changes proposed to our contract is the elimination of the top tier of health insurance in favor of a higher deductible, less comprehensive plan that costs only 9% less. This would result in negligible savings and a big increase on the burden of the staff. In my family, we have many permanent medical costs associated with a lifelong disease, totaling tens of thousands of dollars each year. If our current plan is eliminated, you are placing the burden of those decreased benefits directly on our family, something that is not tenable given the steady increase in our contribution levels under Chapter 78 that have virtually wiped out raises for the past decade. Eliminating this health plan, one that almost every one of your eligible staff members is enrolled in, certainly does not feel like support to me, the support that I've grown to love in this community. Our children deserve the best. In order to provide them, provide for them, we need the best staff. We as a community must make it a priority to retain and attract incredible staff members. Reducing our health care benefits is not the way to accomplish that. Thank you. Board of Ed. I'm Paula Bragg. I'm a high school math teacher in my 18th year here at Vernon's High School. I think, first of all, that all of you know, board members, administrators, faculty, how much I love this district. I love your children. I am so thrilled with the parents that have given me these beautiful children to work with. I've worked in other school districts, including a prep school. And I can tell you, I have never worked with a better faculty at any district I've been involved in. We have such a high quality of teachers in this school that truly love the children of Somerset Hills. Every year, they don't give less. They give more. They step up all the time and say, what else can I do to make this a better school? What can I do to give your child a better education? And I think what the staff is looking for is for you to understand this and appreciate it. I happen to have my own situation, as we all do with the increased cost of health care. I'm a single person with one income and a family. And I've seen my net salary go down about $6,000 a year with the health care costs that I have to pay for. That's significant. And my cost of living goes up. My bills do not decrease. I have to work harder and harder all the time to try to make ends meet. And I think all of the staff are feeling this. Yet we never take away from the children. We really are very devoted to what goes on in this school. I think that as a board, what we are looking for for you to do is to appreciate what we do, understand that we need your assistance to make it through these very difficult times. This is not an inexpensive state to live in. It's a very expensive state. And we need that relief in Chapter 78 as a faculty. Please take that into consideration. Thank you.
First, I am such a proud member of the Somerset Hills Education Association. I have to tell you that the group of people that is sitting in front of you is one of the most talented group of educators that you will find anywhere. And I'm proud to be one of them. So thank you so much for letting me be uh, one of you. But I have to tell you, teaching in this district has become more and more difficult, not just on me, but on my family. In order to support my family, I have to have three jobs outside of this school job. And some of them can take an additional 20 hours per week. Uh, so sometimes I'm working 30, 40 hours a week above and beyond what I do here at the high school. In addition to that, I find myself spending more time uh, every single year teaching the students not in contracted time. Two years ago, I calculated the number of hours I spent with group contact time with the students to help them, to make them better, to give them experiences. And it was just about 200 hours. These are not stipended hours. I do not receive a single stipend here in the district. And there are many teachers here that I know give extra help sessions in the evening for which they are not paid that go above and beyond every single day. And we're asking for something very simple. We're asking for a fair contract where both sides negotiate and both sides give and both sides get. I was taking notes earlier. I wasn't being rude and texting on my phone. I was taking notes earlier and I think I heard the auditor speak to a five point four million dollar surplus and when when I'm looking at this with teachers losing six thousand dollars a year and I hear numbers like five point four million dollar surplus I think it's an awful shame that we haven't settled already so I'd like the board to really take that into consideration that we are people that we have families we go above and beyond for the children of this district and we will continue to do so that will not stop but we ask to be compensated appropriately Thank you. Yeah, Matt. James McCarran, I am the art teacher at Fentanyl School Number One. I am the vice president of the association and the head negotiator. I can't thank my fellow teachers, paraprofessionals, secretaries, custodians for coming out tonight to show your support. We do want the best negotiations that we possibly can, and I'm not really truly going to speak completely on negotiation because that's what I do with the Board of Education. But, you know, when I was up here, it was two things. My name is James McCarran, the art teacher, and I just kept sitting down there as this just maybe started thinking about that. And thinking about, my name is James McCarran, in case you don't notice this, I am the recipient of the VFW Teacher of the Year Award this year. I am the recipient of the Bedwell School Teacher of the Year Award. I am the recipient of the Air Force Association Teacher of the Year Award. I am the recipient of the Hull Award, also brought in probably five or six different chef brands over the course of my career, HSA brands. I also got the Lowe's brand for the garden, Toshiba brand for earth science teachers. I'm not the only person that do those things, it's all these people out here too. Those are the things that we do because we care about the school district and we go way above and beyond. And the truth is, is that, as my fellow teachers said, we want to be compensated. My fellow custodians, everybody wants to be compensated for what we do. We do want a fair negotiation with you. We hope when we sit down with you next time, we can walk away with a fair negotiations and even negotiations. And I thank you for the opportunity to speak. One last thing. I didn't expect the budget years report today. My eyes were open. I'm officially asking you for the association right now that we can have an official copy of the budget is report. Just tell me when I can come pick it up or I'll call over to the 
the, the office next week, we'd like a official copy of the budget report. Thank you very much. whether this is the appropriate time for us to speak or if we're supposed to go at the end of the meeting. Um, so I hope this is okay that we're speaking right now. Um, we felt really strongly to, that we wanted to come tonight to show our support for our amazing teachers. Um, the three of us are on the uh, HSA board. Um, Katie and I are co-presidents and Catherine is a vice president and um, we're all very involved in the school. <coughs> We see firsthand how involved the teachers are, and again, we can't speak highly enough about these teachers. Um, we are here this evening. We really felt it was important to relay a firsthand account of our experience with the faculty over the past year and a half. They have been such supportive members of our community and integral to the success of our fundraising and events. Not only do the students love them, but the parents love them too. Um, we trust them with the lives of our kids every day. They're just the best of the best, to say the least. Um, the examples are numerous, but to name a few. Last spring, we held our annual International Food Fest, one of our most well-attended events with over 400 people in attendance. Not only did many of the faculty attend with their families, but they helped decorate the space with items from their amazing architecture museum and helped turn the event helped turn the event into a fundraiser with a silent auction of teacher experiences. Everything from yoga classes to a nail painting party to a nature walk were auctioned off, helping to raise more than $2,000 for our kids. This is something we would really like to replicate again this year. This past December, when it was time to recruit volunteers for the kids' holiday shop, the faculty were among the first to sign up. On a Saturday morning in December, we had a dozen faculty volunteering their time for our event and many more in attendance. This upcoming spring, we're hoping to hold a fundraising event at Penguin Ice Cream with secret faculty scoopers. In a couple of weeks, we'll have surprise faculty readers at our annual family story night, whose committee has also received a huge amount of help from faculty in the planning stages. I mean, the list, I, I could go on and on and on and on. I mean, it, there's, these are just a few of the many examples of our faculty involvement and commitment. Beyond helping to make our events successful, it truly adds to the experience for the students and their families to have them in attendance and volunteer. They always rise to the occasion when we ask for the assistance. We're extremely grateful for all that our faculty do day in, day out in the classroom, but the ways in which they extend themselves outside of the classroom is really what makes that well the very special place that it is. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough for all you do. Really, you're the best. Thank you. serves on the HSA. I have three children in the school system. I have a daughter in middle school and two children in the elementary school. And um, I thought long and hard about coming and, and speaking because I, as an educator, I know um, um, I've sat on both sides um, as a teacher. I'm negotiating for my Indians when I taught for 15 years. Um, as an administrator, um, never sat on the board, but I understand um, how challenging um, this situation is. And I guess as a community member, um, 
I just want to come up here and just say I know how hard it is. Um, chapter 78 uh, has made things extremely difficult on top of the 2% cap. And um, when these teachers, people out here who are not teachers, who are members of the community, when you hear the teachers come up and say that they're making thousands of dollars less than what they were years ago, that is true. I really, um, it's hard for me to find anyone in my profession who is making more money now than they were years ago. And um, I think, I don't know what the answer is because I'm pretty sure that roughly 90 to 95% of our budget goes to salary benefits. And um, I don't know how much room there is. I don't. Um, but I think what's required, um, if, if, we, if we can make change, we should make change. And I fully support that. Um, because I will say the one thing, with your property taxes, um, you know what you're paying for. When you think about your federal and your state, where is that going? Who's that supporting? You don't always really know. But I know here the money that I spend goes to support this school community, um, the fantastic team that we have running here. Um, so it's really money well spent. So I think, I guess, just with that being said, um, no matter what happens, I think it's just really important for all of us to just, um, you know, when you want to be. When I read these days uh, about education and leadership, they talk about the importance of empathetic leadership. From the Harvard Business Review to Forbes, that leadership today requires empathy. That is probably the most important skill. And um, here tonight, I think um, I want to support and I want to help the teachers get what they can as a taxpayer. I hope the board can do the best that they can and close a deal for them. But I think above and beyond that, um, I really hope that we can have. Um, Look at things with that, through those things as it, with an empathetic lens, um, knowing how hard it must be. Uh, you know, this uh, this furlough that's been going on is pointing out that roughly 80% of people in our country uh, live paycheck to paycheck. And I would be willing to bet that a large percentage of the people here in this room, that's their case, it's tough. And so um, empathy um, is required, empathetic leadership. So. Um, Thank you all you teachers for all you do, and also thank you um, to our Board of Education because I know um, some of these things are out of your control. You can't control the outrageous health care costs and, you know, what that's going on. I get that. I do. So I understand the challenge on both sides, but um, I support both of you, you know, coming to an agreement that's going to work best for all of us here in this wonderful community and this wonderful school district. So thank you.
the 6.5 we made. But, well, we didn't change any of the committees or take anything away. All we did was, I mean, we were... The public was done.
current business administrator and their business administrator have never done this formula. It's a massive Excel spreadsheet, probably as big as this room if you printed it out. Um, so for the $7,500, we found, we, we went out to bid, got several quotes. Um, it's, a, it, it's a low number, so it's going to cost us half of the $7,500. They're going to do it real quick. This way, we have an independent person doing this. This will be last year's tuition. So the numbers are going to be the numbers. There should be no argument about what the reconciliation number is. So that's why we decided to go that, that way, Luke. Um, it's, uh, whether we do it every year is a question. If, if, if our business administrators feel comfortable with their business administrator next year, we might not spend the money. We just don't know. We need to do this once. Um, we were shocked how quick they could do it. So I think by the next board meeting, we should be able to share the, to share the results. I think that worked out very well. I think for for three seven hundred dollars for this board, it's worth you know having an independent set of eyes. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Okay, um, we also we we talked about uh, and it's on the agenda. We're going to vote on a ping pong club and a yoga club. We have students in the high school who have wanted to put this these two clubs together. They talked to talk to the principal. And it's not going to cost the board anything at the moment. They have advisors who are going to do that. So we put that on the agenda for a vote this evening. Um, the YMCA summer program, we're going to vote on the contract. That's just a contract that we wrote three years ago. We're in the third year of the contract. However, they wanted to expand the contract. And we said, we'll, we'll negotiate that expansion outside of the contract. So we're working on what the cost of an extra room would be, or they might say they don't want to do that. So we're not going to um, talk about those, those possible numbers because we're going to vote that we're negotiating in public. Um, we talked about the audit report that you heard from the auditor. I just want to make clear that the $5 million, that's not a, that's not a surplus. That's like, like in your checking account. We started the year with $5 million, we ended the year with $5 million. That's like you don't take your checking account down to zero and the lot of five million dollars is your one. Um, so we have, we decided to have to have the auditor come. We talked about the referendum money in fund thirty. Now, ref, now fund thirty is what we use for capital um, improvements. So we have some money left over from the referendum that we're trying to spend on the ramp, a handicap ramp for the high school, um, the home site, no bleachers on Alcott Field. So we're going to have that done uh, in the spring so handicapped people can get, can get a wheelchair up onto the home side of the field. That will cost about $63,000 to $54,000. We're also going to, we're going to do some, the handicap parking at the middle school needs some improvement. And we want to do the student access center down to the Burkersville Shopping Center, but we also talked about that. The, the owners of the shopping centers will not negotiate in, in, in good faith with us. We've tried. We think it's a win-win to build a sidewalk along the retaining wall, a handicap parking by the baseball field. So we earmarked about 340000 for that project, but we're making no progress. So the committee is recommending go back to the Weicker, um, the bank, uh, the Weicker Realty owns the bank property. And we wanted to see if we can get them to be a good neighbor and let the students continue to walk down the access ramp for emergency vehicles. As you know, most of you in the audience, the gate is open. The bank has left it open, which is very nice. Um, but we were going to try to get a negotiation with them to see if that would be a long term. We still think that um, building this access along the back of the shopping center, coming into where the alleyway to where the ferries is, is the best answer. Um, if anybody goes down, 
behind behind Gary's there's not a lot of traffic <coughs> compared to where Chipotle is. Um, we think it's we think it's a no-brainer. So we're gonna to continue to try to work to get that done. It might take a year or two years, I don't know. Um, we got So the rest of the board will be the SB will get these next uh, the next meeting. And in the budget binders, there's reports from each principal saying what they need to run the school. Um, there's also the cost for um, uh, for transportation for special ed. And we, we've been going through these to uh, work on, on the budget, which we will present to the public at the end of March at a board meeting. Um, and I think um, it would be enlightening to any board member to look at the back of the audit report that, that the CPA just gave. And it will show you the assessed value in each town. In Burnersville, it's $2.3 billion. It's been going down. So what's happening in all three towns the assessed values are dropping because of the large estates, which are not assessed the values. So what's happening, people who live in smaller houses, like most of us, we are paying higher taxes, more than the 2%. So that is a big issue that we're dealing with in this town, these three towns, because mansions that used to be $20 million are now only assessed at $10 million. So it's really impacting where the taxes are going through the three towns. Um, but there's great tables in, in, in the back of the audit that shows the last 10 years of assessed values. Um, so next month, we're going to spend more time on staffing. We're looking at staffing through all three schools to see if, if we have too many teachers or not enough. We're also going to look at, um, at the health care costs. The health care costs we're hoping a 10% increase is what we're hoping, but it could go higher. So a 10% increase is, it would, would be a lower increase than we've had it in a few years. We had a 14% increase last year, and the year before we had one at 19%. Um, so those increases are very difficult for the board to swap. Um, we talked about the booster clubs, and arts and sports, um, the way those are funded. So um, our, assistant principal, uh, our assistant superintendent um, is, work, is gonna work with the business administrator to do a more in-depth study on how we allocate funds to all the co-curriculars, especially in the high school, and get back to us with a report <coughs> um, before the end of March. We talked about residency verification. Um, there's been a concern by some people that our residency, residency verification process could be improved. So uh, the superintendent's recommending that um, when we enter the data for somebody who is renting a building in the three towns, we will, we will ask to see them. We see the document, we will then ask when the, is the lease is going to end, and we'll follow up when the lease ends. So if they have a three-year lease, we want to make sure they're still there in, in, in three years. So we're going to continue our current residency verification for incoming students, and, and we'll monitor this and see if any future changes are needed. Um, I think that's what we talked about. Uh, it took three and a half hours, but we still talked about it. Um, so I'd like to move. I'll move the finance ones first. I'll move finance recommendation <coughs> resolution one through eight. Are there any uh, <coughs> No, so it's one through eight. Do I have a second?
discussion? There's one way down. Yes, sir. You're far away. Yeah, I just would like to make a statement that I would like to see we as a board be more aggressive in pursuing this student access area, either in the way that the architects slash engineers proposed it, or simply put a fence and do that opening. I, I feel like I've been involved in this from the beginning. Uh, I was asked to let this, Mr. Baker and myself were at the planning board meetings, were asked to let this go through and then we would negotiate. We haven't negotiated yet. I would like to see our insurance company negotiate with their insurance company. As Mr. Tom pointed out last meeting, there has been an access there years ago uh, that has been fine. I, I do believe, I'm going to say this publicly, that is a disaster waiting to happen. The way the kids cross that parking lot is, is very dangerous. The, the, the way that we have proposed is, in my opinion, and the opinion of, of others up here, the safest way for our students to get into that uh, the shopping center and provide a lot of business uh, to the, the, the stores in that center. It is a win-win situation for everyone, but the other way is, again, it's, it's a disaster waiting to happen, and, and God forbid something happens when those kids are crossing that lot in all different directions. Planning board granted relief to the shopping center of, of some parking. Uh, that was done in good faith because they believed that the um, they, they believed that the shopping center was that this was uh, a, a, something that was going to happen. It wasn't. I'm very very disappointed in this whole thing, and I just feel like we as a board need to be pursuing this very diligently. I know we are pursuing it. I would like to see us pursue it as diligently as possible because not everybody acted in good faith in this whole deal. I'm very upset about it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, could you remind me of the uh, source of funds for the It's coming out of the the excess money from the referendum. Um, there's, there's a, we have about six hundred thousand dollars left from the referendum because we the contractors were able to the, the media center, the multi-disabled um, complex down down in the old library, the bed and bathroom. We, we, we did it six hundred thousand dollars cheaper. So the plan is to use about half of that money to, 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 to do these last few remaining projects. They can only be used by what the, what the voters voted on, all right? So the, if we're let, let's say we're left with 300,000, which we think is a good number, we would give that back to, to the taxpayers to help lower the debt service this coming year. So, we, so the, the finance committee has to play with what's the best amount to give them all back in one year, to give it back and split it half and half, but it has to go back to the taxpayers if we don't spend it on these projects that we intend to And then is there another project that needs the intent to the referendum that's on our project list? The, um, the, the handicap ramp to the bleachers. Right, away from the two that we discussed. And the only other one is at the, um, you know, at the middle school, some of the handicap parking has to be fixed, and that meets the intent of the project, because that we brought the sidewalk around for people to walk from CD Drive all the way up and, and, and fix all the curbing and all that kind of stuff. What is the power? That's like 37,000 or 38,000. Is there deadlines for that? Um, I think in the next year, maybe. There's not a specific term, however, it is you are supposed to use the funds within a reasonable amount of time. And how long is the city in Not that long, about a year. 
Tim, I think the other the other thing that was a potential project was uh, changing some of the parking in front of the high school, but that was going to be over budget, right? That was going to be. And parking at Bedwell was also over that budget. So. Yeah, just that, that was an additional project that we did look at. Uh, I still can't for the life of me figure out how that increasing that 600 feet or whatever that is could be $500,000. But crazy. I mean, it's, it's not a Any other discussion? Mr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Cooper? Yes. Mr. DiGiovino? Yes. Mr. Mayo? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. Mrs. Tober? Yes. Ms. Virtue? Yes. Ms. Birch? Yes. Mrs. Lees? Yes. If you would like to move um, items one through five under the facilities and operations, then you'll notice that we're approving the selection of a contractor to build, to build the, the middle school play area behind, behind the middle school starting this summer, um, $253,000. So we're excited to get that done. That's part of the strategic plan. Do I have a second for a uh, I think it's one through four. One through four, yes. Okay. Second. Yeah. 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 Mr. Mayo? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. Mrs. Tober? Yes. Virtue? Yes. Ms. Birch? Yes. Mrs. Lees? Yes. Okay, Janice, can you give the curriculum report, please? And the curriculum committee, can everyone hear me? Yes. The curriculum committee uh, met on January 15th and we are now using a new curriculum proposal protocol. This protocol is used for proposals for new course adoptions. So when the committee is asked to approve a course change, <clears throat> we will be provided with all pertinent information and viable options in order to better evaluate the new proposal. We did use it at our last meeting and worked quite well. During the, this December board meeting, I reported out to you that Grant Comer proposed that we replace our outdated AP statistics and AP biology textbooks. At that time, the committee requested a student survey be completed to determine preferences of hard copy versus electronic versions and to provide the committee with the costs of each. The school's research showed there are pros and cons to each version. And even though a higher percentage of students preferred online versions, the annual amount would be cost prohibitive. For example, AP Statistics annual online cost is $7,800 versus the one-time only hard copy cost of $12,600. Typically, we keep text for eight years, so $7,800 times eight equals $62,400 versus a one-time only hard copy cost of $12,600. At this point, we are purchasing hard copies. The future may change this practice where it, become, where it could become more viable to purchase online versions. Then we discuss the performance opportunities in the BHS Chorus A program. The discussion centered around leaving Chorus with the same number of performances. We are, however, looking into the homework policies in all courses, and as the discussion progressed, we talked about homework as a factor surrounding stress. Um, updates. Somerset Hill School District received notification 
that we have been randomly selected to participate in the English Language Arts ELA Park Field Test for Spring 2019. By the way, Park is now called New Jersey Student Learning Assessment and JSLA. The primary purpose of ELA field testing is to evaluate test questions and tasks among different sample groups of students. We, are continu we continue discussing plans for remediation for students who did not pass the Park Algebra in 2017-18. Uh, Somerset Hills School District applied for enrollment in the A-level anatomy course students could take for credit at RVCC, but we were not accepted into the program. RBCC needed a teacher who met specific requirements. For instance, they needed a master's in anatomy. We plan on looking for a teacher who may want to work toward the required, the required degree. So more may follow on that. <clears throat> However, SHSD was selected to participate in the Sanofi Students to Science S2S pilot program. Our district will be given eight V labs or V labs to be used for middle school students. There would be two per teacher. The S2S Technology Center will simultaneously conduct a series of supplemental, age appropriate, hands on science experiments. S2S sends the experiment kits, trains the teachers, and conducts a joint ses session by use of video conferencing. Students may ask questions in real time as the experiment is being conducted. We are looking into professional development for coaches. At this time, the handbook needs updating. More will come. We reviewed field trips. All were previously approved. Then, the lastly, uh, each committee member was given the students taking action together or better known as STAT, package review. We will discuss this at our February meeting. So I would like to move items 1 through 5 on the agenda and 6 through 10 on the agenda. Are there any questions? Second. Uh, yeah, I thank you. Oh, sorry. You to speak very loudly. I have a question uh, on the Harvard Model Congress. Uh, is there, so, so um, obviously civics instruction is uh, hugely important to children today. I understand how the government works at all or doesn't. Jim, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Oh, can you speak up? Sure, sure, sure. So, the, the, the question is with respect to the model Congress. And, um, you know, what I was saying is that civics instruction um, is, is probably never been more important for society at large, but for sure within high school. And I know the model conference have been, been engaged in the model conference, I've chaperoned the model conference before, and there's two offered a year, one in, one in Boston, one in D.C., one in by Princeton, one by Harvard. Yet we kind of constrain involvement to a certain number of students. And I'm just curious as to what it would take to expand that. Because I think if students in the school, starting as freshmen, you know, want to participate in that, that's something that we should encourage. Um, so I, I just, I don't know, you know, what, what the answer is. Maybe we can look into it. I know many programs will run, people will do model Congress freshman, sophomore, junior, then senior year. The way the model Congress works is it builds on the experience year by year. So to have a limited number of people who can participate in model Congress, you know, is, I think, unfortunate. And you know, I, I see four 
faculty chef rooms for 32 students, one you know, for every eight students. It doesn't seem to be a faculty interest issue. Um, so I'm just curious as to what it would take to expand that program because I think it's a very important program for the students today. Uh, Tim, I'll absolutely take a look into that and see how you know, we can expand it. Mr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Cooper? Yes. Mr. DiGiacchino? Yes. Mr. Mayo? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. Mrs. Tober? Yes. Ms. Virtue? Yes. Ms. Birch? Yes. Mrs. Lease? Yes. Okay, Heather's the new personnel and policy chair. I'd like to tell us about the committee. Okay. Um, so personnel and policy met on January 15th and everyone was in attendance. Um, we start with personnel. Uh, we reviewed all agenda items that are on here this evening. We reviewed the small change to the school psychologist position, which Gretchen explained during public comments. We then reviewed demographic data similar to finance and facilities to evaluate staffing needs. Um, we reviewed a request from a staff member who wanted to provide services to the community for compensation. We agreed that we did not think these services fell under the school's umbrella. And finally, we discussed the need to make sure that um, everybody is aware of and following the volunteer policy. Uh, that's to make sure that that's happening. In moving on to policy, which met immediately following, um, we reviewed the results of the stress estimate policy regulation audit. We are looking at policies that have come out of that audit that we need to review and adopt. These policies are on the agenda for the first reading tonight, and we will discuss them in our next committee meeting. The uh, activity participation fee program policy is in the second reading this evening. We continue to review our homework policy. We discussed that homework should be based on two principles. First, it should be content driven. And secondly, we should have a outcome based mindset and allow for reuse and retake as appropriate to drive this mindset. Um, high school administration at this point is evaluating the policy and is going to come back to us with some additional input. Now that we have lived with the random student drug testing policy for a bit, we've reviewed language to adapt the appeal process and the committee recommends adopting this language. And then finally, um, in our next meeting, we're going to define next steps for discussion with regards to the 8th grade overnight field trips and um, concurrently with finance and um, facilities we're going to be taking a look at the fundraising policy and regulation so more to come on that. I move um, personnel agenda items 1 through 15 on the agenda and 16 through 20 on the agenda. Any discussion? Yes. 
So, with respect to the middle school overnight trip policy, what, what is the item of concern or an issue with respect to approving it? Well, we've talked about that from a lot of dis different capacities. One is student safety. We've talked about um, having appropriate chaperones. Um, I'm trying to think. This was a discussion we... Yeah, we didn't talk about that this month. It, we have it on our list to come back to, but it was not. we didn't get into it at this last meeting. Right. No, we, we talked about it previously. We want to clearly define the end point to that discussion in our next meeting so that we can come to a decision. Okay. So we have, we have an overnight policy at the high school, and we're, we, the, the, the specific catalyst for the overnight policy in the middle school is for eighth grade. So the subsequent year, they're able to do overnight trips. So I'm just, you know, would love for us to sort of narrow in on what the issues are that yes. would prevent us from approving a policy that doesn't presume that there is a trip which has to be subsequently approved. Mm -hmm. So I'd just love to get to an understanding of what we need to do to prove that policy. Yes, and that's exactly why I put it in here because we have to move it forward and get it figured out. We can make sure that happens in uh, February at that committee meeting. <coughs> I do want the board and um, the audience to know too, just in the policy section, that the policy 5330.04 for administering an opioid antidote should be marked as mandated. So that is, uh, so I guess the subsidy has has two, we have no board. This is a high school only? We, we we currently have um, school psychologists. For each school. This is in anticipation of um, proposing a new position for next year, um, in which that reporting structure could look different depending on um, what emergent situations the person might be dealing with. But until we know that that position is budgeted and approved by the board, it is, uh, it's sort of a moot point. But in, in having this job description changed now, it would enable us to fill that position in the way that uh, we would like to. Oh, I thought this was the one that, oh, so it's not the same one that we approved to. It's, all we have on there is the job description. We have not approved any oh, okay. staffing for next year. Oh. Okay, so. Number five on the um, personnel policy does not correspond to this job. Okay, that was my mistake then. No, I'm sorry. Does that make sense, Mom? Yeah, because I was yeah, because I was um, looking at this one as a high school one, and I looked at mm -hmm. the job. Right, that's just a leave replacement position. Okay. That, um, we put something into. Okay. Any other comments? Mr. Baker? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. DiGiacchino? Yes. Mr. Dale? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. Mrs. Tober? Yes. Ms. Virtue? Yes. Ms. Burge? Yes. Mrs. Lees? Yes. Kathy? Community oh, Engagement? Jamie, I have to do policy. Oh, whoops. Okay. Um, so I move. Um, Move, move policy agenda item number one on the agenda and item two on the addendum. <coughs> Any discussion there? Second. I got a second, thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Mr. Baker? No. Ms. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Tijikina? Yes. Mr. Mayo? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Santoro? Yes. Mrs. Tober? Yes. 
Ms. Birch here? Yes. Ms. Birch? Yes. Mrs. Lee? Yes. Okay. Now community engagement. So the community relations committee met on January 17th for over an hour. The entire uh, committee was in attendance, um, as well as um, Dr. Dempsey and Dr. Schroffler. The first topic we talked about um, surrounded partnerships with local government. And the group agreed that it would really be beneficial to meet with representatives of the Burnsville town government um, for the purpose of enhancing further, uh, further collaborations and um, perhaps for um, increasing partnerships that we have with the town going forward. Um, it was also agreed that um, in, in having this meeting that we felt it was really critical um, to have an agenda prepared in advance so that there were specific topics um, around which discussion could occur. So Dr. Dempsey agreed that she will talk to the mayor of Burnsville as well as uh, other local officials um, around the concept of bringing a group together and that they would explore um, who else should be included in the meeting. Our to uh, second topic surrounding pop-up libraries um, in our communities, which we thought would be beneficial to children living in ELL households. Um, the committee agreed that this initiative um, would be moved forward. Uh, we were contacted by uh, St. John of the Mountain Church um, as an interested party in, in helping to support this initiative. Um, and Dr. Dempsey agreed that she would approach the library board as well. Um, public libraries, for anyone who's not aware, are actually physical boxes, almost like mailboxes, um, where you, that you fill with books that, um, in our case, would be mostly children, will be filled out with um, children's books, and, and people in the community could um, sort of take those books on an honor basis, um, take some, return some, put some in, um, and it would just be a continuous local library for people to use um, to ensure that uh, our children continue read, especially over the summer months um, when they're not in school. Um, Jen Schaffler, uh, Dr. Schaffler um, joined our committee to give us updates surrounding um, the uh, Sanofi Students to Science um, partnership that uh, Ms. Virtue already spoke about, so I don't think I need to go into more detail around that. And then um, Dr. Schaffler also updated us on what she learned from Gateway and Bridgewater High Schools around partnership programs, or sorry, internship programs that they offer for their students. Uh, Dr. Schaffler was able to speak with administrators at those two schools um, surrounding um, the type of programs they offer to their students, how they're supported, um, et cetera, and how the schools administer those programs. We agreed that um, Dr. Schaffer would also reach out to Northern Valley High School um, as they were another uh, school district that presented at the school board convention um, that had a similar program. Um, and the community relations group felt that it would be appropriate for a small group of representatives from the Somerset Hill School District to actually plan a visit to two or three of these schools to actually witness firsthand what they're doing and, and talk to the administrators that are supporting this program. No actions to move forward at this time. Um, could you clarify that? I wasn't. Uh, is that a high school? Oh, what, what, what are you talking about? I, I, I wasn't clear. Okay. Yeah, so the was. internship was, we, we discussed it, um, at, at other meetings, but the internship piece um, specifically was around um, internships that they allow their students to do, mostly in their junior and senior year. Okay. Some schools they have an administrator who actually goes out and. Um, yeah, because I know we are talking about in curriculum. I'm always getting confused because it seems to be this um, curriculum will talk about something and revisit it back in this other um, organization. I, I don't and I think, you know, it's not unusual to have content that crosses um, committee boundaries. Uh, certainly, the feeling is that um, anything that we implement has to go through curriculum. 
the uh, Community Relations Committee has sort of charged themselves with looking for these opportunities that we said were important to us in our strategic plan. Kathy went to two um, programs at school boards convention that were at two of these schools, and then you may remember we had a student who spoke out early in this year about a program that is in Bridgewater where students can work outside um, school, earn money, but also have a receipt of school credit. And so that's the uh, what Jen is looking into at in Bridgewater. Okay, so, so Jen's right. Okay. So so Jen was um, participated in all of the community relations meeting this month. I do okay. think that ensures that you know you have we fidelity have across yeah. those for sure. Good, good. I yes. think I talked about that in the curriculum and about the internship. And so right, right, that. right. And, and there's the um, science program is another good example of, of that as well. You know, they, they do cross boundaries. Um, I think the mission of the curriculum committee is perhaps a little more clear sometimes, and community relations has boundaries that are a little fuzzier. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to comment on the um, the library. The, sorry, the pop up library. We actually have one of those in Gladstone that the um, PPAC Gladstone Library put in place, and it's phenomenal. It was so well received, and it's constantly being utilized and books turned over so it, it really has it's a great resource for the community and I'm sure Bernardsville Library has ways that they know how to implement this but you know they can reach out to Gladstone too to see how it works and yeah the words really is great did they say where that was going to anybody know where that would be or is that under discussion yeah no we have to figure out thing Ours happens to be near a very busy little deli that gets a lot of foot traffic, so. <laughs> the location is a The location. So that's something that we're working with the library. We've been working with the library. The library board. Oh, I want to mention them as well. So it's not just a school pop up the library. No. And um, as Kathy mentioned, this came out of her work with um, St. John the Mount. So.
is Jody Sebastian. I live at 18 Stone Fence Road. My daughter Caitlin was one of the recipients this afternoon. Um, so I dropped my daughter off once she finished her homework and I wanted to come back to say something. So I'm up here as a mother of three children in the school district. I'm a daughter, I'm an educator, and I'm also a physician. And so the medical crisis is huge, but I see kind of a different perspective on it. And so when you're considering your plan for these teachers, and I was listening to some of what they were saying, I was really moved because in a crisis, a medical, unexpected medical emergency or a plan that has a very high deductible, you're fine if you're healthy, but if God forbid something happens, you could really be in a lot of trouble financially. So I just ask you when you're really looking at this, if there's any way to maintain their medical benefits that they've had, I just ask you to really look at it hard because I think that it's fine when you're healthy, but if God forbid something happens to you or your family members, it can be a real financial hardship. So if we can give the teachers this, I'd just like you to look at it very carefully, please. Thank you. Thank you. And Emmy Furbish, I teach at the middle school, and I've never been to a meeting we spoke before, but I was wondering, can I comment on the public libraries? Okay, so I'm just hoping if you're thinking of putting these in the um, lower income areas, and I think it's a fantastic idea. I'm hoping you'll consider getting books that are written for children to read in Spanish language, as well as books that parents might read to their children in Spanish language. I think that might really benefit our school. wanted to uh, touch on a few things. Joey Sebastian was just up here to um, reiterate how much we value our teachers and Mr. Mitchell was also here basically asking you to look at the issues that you have to face with an empathetic point of view. So first and foremost, thank you for your service to our school district and thank you for taking these matters into consideration. Second of all, any opportunity I can get to laud our teachers, I will. And I'm going to use two specific examples. My daughters both participate in the OP3 program at Bedwell. And some of the work that's done behind that program might not be recognized, but to be quite honest, to have a teacher email me with opportunities for my daughter to do further investigations into um, astrological offerings at our local community colleges, I basically love them for that. In addition, Mr. Thurlow has coordinated trips in conjunction with his um, invention convention and his architecture program last year that involved students basically learning more about the Woolworth building and a lot of this outreach is very important for creating educational experiences that are so valuable to our students. I can tell you that those gentlemen right there have made quite a difference on my older daughter who participates in the chorus program as well as Ms. Um, Anthony at Bedwell. So again, I applaud them. And then lastly, there was some uh, information that I shared with you via email on um, a project that I'm involved with called Schools for Climate Action. And in terms of addressing some of the bigger issues that we basically all need to take into consideration since we're responsible for um, trying to maintain a sustainable environment on our planet for our future generations. A group of um, youth 
and adult representatives are planning a civic trip to Washington at the end of March. And it would be nice to have a proposal from uh, the Somerset Hill School District simply because not only are we in an area that has historically cherished the natural resources around us, specifically efforts in the Great Swamp National Wildlife Refuge that could have been an airport. So um, we have educators that try and instill a love for nature, like Mr. James McCarran and his efforts, not only as an art teacher, but as the Patricia Abernathy Ho Garden Club of America award recipient. So if um, our district <coughs> would respectfully consider uh, this legislation, or I guess technically it's um, a resolution for you to consider, there's um, a meeting that we have scheduled with Senator Booker, and there's also um, an agenda item on the National uh, School Board Association for them to consider at their work. Thank you. I just wanted to let you know the, the policy committee is going to look at in more in depth at what you sent us and um, Strauss Esme who we use for to our policy management has just put out a sustainability policy that we will be looking at as well. Okay, so that's going to be considered in the policy committee. Yes. Thank you very much. Discussion. There are several issues I have with the committee set up. Um, I know we combined some committees. I know it was mentioned to combine finance and facilities. Uh, and the next thing I knew it was combined. I lost a committee chairmanship um, in my starting my ninth year as, as a board of ed member. 
Um, and it was you know, a little frustrating to lose that, but I, I don't know that I had to lose that. I, I, I do think combining the meetings will facilitate things. We do have overlap, so in that sense it is a good thing. We um, do have issues with some of the other committees, whether you know, one certain committee should be in existence or not. I'm not going to discuss that here. That's not the purpose, but I do think it should be a public discussion. And before we set up the committees, I think we need to review what we do this year, moving forward for next year, and it needs to be done again, as, as mentioned in public. Any further comments? Second. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for coming. Thank you.